Let's talk about another meeting, another summit of world leaders, which is the Bilderberg meeting. Uh, I am excited to talk about the Bilderbergs. Are you? I am excited about it because it it's, sounds like a tinker toy. So many people have written us over the past few weeks. They're like, you guys covered Davos really well, the World Economic Forum, like the Bilderbergs, the shadiness of the Bilderbergs. You please, you got to dive into it. And of course, that was just unfolding in Washington. I think it just wrapped up yesterday. Yes. The Bilderberg meetings happened this weekend and ended on Sunday. And it is very much like a Davos gathering of powerful and unelected officials who meet to decide what is best for the world. Again, we remind you of the archetype of the Davos man the powerful business person who sees country borders as something to dissolve, but really only for their own corporate interest. So as I did with Davos agenda, I had to sort of check my bad attitude about wealthy people meeting in closed you know, places to make decisions for the rest of us, uh, because I, of course, have this innate mistrust. Well, they're also unelected. So who the hell is Bill Gates to tell you what to do during a pandemic? They are unelected, but they're all also a lot of government officials. Actually, not all of them are unelected. Um, the the prime minister of Finland came. There were uh, there were elected officials and unelected officials. Um, I'm, I'm going to sort of talk about why I think those two are like not good bedfellows. But again, it is, you know, okay, so we told you what they are. Uh, the meeting attendees are only published a few days before the event. So I did get a screenshot of them. Uh, this year's list reads about as you'd expect it. Uh, Deutsche Bank, Goldman Sachs, Shell, Pfizer, oh. USB, AXA, The Atlantic, The e Economist, Facebook, BP, Volvo, Google, Microsoft, Shell, I see. Glaxo uh, Smith Klein, uh, the weapons maker, and all manner of government organizations, including the I think CIA. Glaxo, I think Glaxo Smith Klein makes medicine, don't they? Oh. You're thinking of uh, Lockheed Martin. Right? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I misspoke. But they're all, you know. Okay. Um, different kind of weapon. Senator Kristen Sinema, um, <laughs> as well as, I, like I pointed out, a few, uh, the Prime Minister of, of Finland and a, a few other elected officials. Now, we didn't actually get a schedule. So, uh, as you recall, I went through the Davos schedule with a fine tooth comb. This one, we just got sort of key elements, right? So, it's geopolitical realignments, NATO challenges, China, Indo Pacific realignment. Uh, Russia, continuity of government, disruption of the global financial system. I think they're wanting to not do that, <laughs> that was, right? I'm so, going, what are you going to after when lunch? When I saw that, I was like, when I saw that as a panel, disruption of the global financial system, I was like, yeah, let's do that. But then I realized probably they, <laughs> that the people coming here don't want this because I like the idea of Bitcoin and taking money out of the hands of government. But I think they're probably talking about how to prevent that or if it happens take control of it i mean of course yes. this is one thing that came out of the world economic forum meetings was uh and, and uh, or no, excuse me the who meetings i can't get them all track they're all shady characters but was the idea that what happens when there's a collapse we would take control of the financial system that is uh. and we will take control of it and we will create like our own sort of one currency if the world collapses you and we'll take control don't worry about us we'll take control of it yeah uh, here's my favorite word, disinformation. They need to talk about that, how to use that to their power, I'm sure. Post-pandemic health and fragmentation of de democratic societies because you know of all the slippage, right? Oh, and yeah. then, of course, Ukraine is just its own topic. Like, <laughs> what are we going to do? I noticed there's no discussion of Syria. There's nothing on Yemen, Ethiopia, Nothing on Nigeria, nothing no. on Africa. It's about Pacific uh, Pacific Indo realignment. So how do we take on China? Yes. How do we realign things in the South China Sea? How do we make sure that Zelensky has money against Vladimir Putin? Yes. How do we take control of your money system? Um, does it, anything on there about pandemic? Oh, I know Kirsten, you mentioned Kirsten Cinema was there. Yes. Uh, what post pandemic health? Oh. So I do like the word post in there. Does It shows that like, you There'll know. be an end to it, unlike the war on terror, which just continues forever. Right, okay. yeah, there's no post-war on terror. Um, no, of course, there's nothing nefarious. But when you consider business leaders aligning themselves with the government 
to sc discuss these issues, you can see how problematic that is, right? It reiterates this notion that the government is only friendly to big businesses and not small businesses. So during the pandemic, we saw how the government was willing to help these big businesses, right? And not small businesses. Uh, theorists such as Carol Roth, whose book we've mentioned several times on this show, says that the government doesn't like small businesses because they can't control them like they do biz big business. Well, then look at this list of bedfellows, right? It's hard to dispute that, knowing that these thought discussions take place between big business and government should make us weary of what big business does and also gives us a sense that they are not just private businesses when they, you know, so when we make this argument like, oh, you know, Jack Dorsey can do whatever he wants with Twitter, but not if he is involved with major discussions of policy for citizens of the world, then you no longer are just like, it's your private company, you should do what you want, right? Right. If you have power of a politician, then this changes the nature of what we're dealing with. I think it does. And, you know, look, if a lot of these people are unelected and they can drive, we've seen it before, they're already doing it. Like, this yes. is not a conspiracy theory. This is happening. As, you know, Senator Rand Paul said uh, last week, he said, you know, people used to talk about this as sort of a conspiracy theory. It's not. It's literally in their meeting minutes and on their agenda on what they plan to do. Yeah, it, they've told us what they plan to do. It's laid out in front of us. I guess as I've talked about here on the show, Catherine Austin Fitz has, has written about this extensively. Just go through what they're actually saying, and you see them implementing this. Whether it's an electric, pa you know, power grid control, buying up land, um, consolidation of power under one digital currency, yeah. so that you know we are let we you track everything that we are doing, uh, vaccine passports, like all of these things for control, because yes. that's what they that's what they want is absolute control. I mean, we've been talking about this growing use of the word cabal, right? Mm -hmm. And it used to be just something that conspiracy theorists said, but really we are seeing more and more evidence that these groups of unelected people exert their influence in the shadows. And yeah, this, you know, I, I mean, I guess they're just, they're willing to like put on nice clothes and go say, we're doing these things and we want to talk about nice things, but really that this is what it is. Yeah. Uh, and even like Max Blumenthal was saying, like, there's some weird characters here. I don't know if you saw this. Like, this is um, Max Blumenthal on Twitter uh, who said uh, this resemblance to Larry Hogan. So Maryland's governor, Larry Hogan, who was not on the list, who is not one of the people invited, but was there, has a has a has a meeting list in his hands, an agenda in his hands. Like he wasn't on the list, was not invited but he was there nonetheless. Like these people, like you don't see them on the list. And so you wonder like who, who is actually showing up to these things quietly, surreptitiously, yeah. um, who get caught, you know, later, like leaving these secret meetings and, and what they plan to do. So people have been saying to us for a while, like the Bilderbergs, you, we talk about WEF, the World Economic Forum, and those guys at Davos, the Bilderbergs just as nefarious and scary. And, uh, and it, it and sounds like a name of a meeting you would put in a comic book. Like it does sound like that's nefarious. Like this, yeah, or like in Eyes Wide Shut. Like this is the meeting you would go to in Eyes Wide Shut or something. We're going to the Bilderberg meeting. Like because, you know. I suppose, yeah. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. You know, we've been banned, we've been blocked, we've been censored. That's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free. That's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.